Hey Bridge Kids, hope you're doing well and that you had a great week. I am greeting you from Gulf Breeze, Breeze, Florida this week. I am on a little vacation with my family, but even while I'm here, I've been thinking about our lesson for this week, and I'm excited for you to hear God's word. There's some really um, neat things in this story that you can use even today in your life. It helps us to understand who Jesus is and helps us to know that we can trust we can trust God and we can trust his word. So if you'll grab your Bibles today and turn to Acts 12, we will continue in our journey through the New Testament. Church Prayer Meeting, Acts 12, 1 through 23. The disciples in the early church were faithful in obeying Jesus' command to witness to others. Every day, more and more people were trusting in Jesus as their savior. This made the Jews angry. King Herod wanted to please the Jews so he could continue to be their king, so he arrested the apostle James, an important church leader. Herod ordered James killed with a sword. This pleased the Jews so much that Herod decided to go after Peter, another important disciple. Herod arrested Peter, but he could not kill the apostle right away. He had to wait until after Passover. Herod imprisoned Peter and assigned four soldiers at a time to guard Peter. Two soldiers were chained to him, one on each side. One soldier guarded the first prison door, while another soldier guarded the second door. The church was concerned about Peter. They met together and prayed for him during the night before Peter was supposed to die. In the prison, Peter was sleeping peacefully between the soldiers when a light filled the prison cell and an angel appeared. No one noticed. The angel had to hit Peter in the side to get him to wake up. Get up, the angel said as Peter's chains fell off. Put on your sandals, wrap your coat around you, and follow me. Of course Peter did as he was told, but he was not quite sure this was real. He thought it might be a dream. He followed the angel through the first set of doors, then through the second set. None of the guards startled. Finally, the angel led Peter to the iron gate leading to the city. The iron gate swung open all by itself. Peter and the angel walked out of the prison and down the street. There the angel suddenly disappeared. Peter was alone, and no one knew he had escaped. When Peter realized he was not dreaming, he knew God had sent an angel to deliver him from Herod. Peter decided to go to the home of a lady named Mary. Peter knew the church members would be praying there. Peter knocked at the gate. A young servant girl named Rhoda came to see who was there. She recognized Peter's voice, but instead of unlocking the gate, she ran to tell the others that Peter was at the gate. Of course, no one believed her. When Rhoda insisted she had heard Peter, they said she was just so worried about Peter that she was imagining he was there. Meanwhile, Peter continued to knock at the door of the gate. When the Christians finally opened the gate, they saw Peter and were amazed. Everyone was talking at once, but Peter raised his hand for them to keep quiet. He told them how he had escaped from prison and told them to tell the church leaders in Jerusalem. Then Peter went away to another place where Herod would not find him. The church members' prayers proved to be too powerful for Herod. The next morning, the soldiers were upset when they could not find Peter. Since they had slept through the entire escape, they had no explanation for King Herod. Herod searched everywhere for Peter, but could not find him. Herod decided the soldiers should be put to death. Sometime later, Herod went to another part of his kingdom and gave a speech. He wore his shiny royal robe as he sat on his throne. As he began to speak, the people shouted, It is the voice of a god and not of a man. Herod liked being called a god. Instead of telling the people that he was just a man, he let them continue calling him a god. Immediately, the angel of the Lord put a disease of worms in Herod's body. He later died of the illness. God judged Herod for letting people give him the glory that only God deserved. God showed he is awesome and powerful by letting Peter out of prison and by striking down Herod. We can talk to God every day through prayer and know that he has the power to help us with our problems and needs. Well, what'd you think? I liked at the very beginning of the, of the lesson, 
I liked the fact that Peter was serving the Lord and things didn't turn out well, right? Like he ended in prison. Um, it just reminded me that sometimes in life when things don't, don't go our way or aren't easy, that it doesn't mean that we weren't doing what's right, that sometimes God brings us to hard places because he has a really good plan. Um, I loved that the other Christian brothers and sisters were praying for Peter and that God heard their prayers. It reminds me that we need to be praying for each other and really praying for what seems to be impossible. They were praying for the release of Peter or probably praying that he wouldn't be killed. Um, and God answered their prayer in a really miraculous way. How cool would that have been to be Peter in the middle of the night and have an angel come and rescue you from prison? And then I think of King Herod, and I think of how he took credit. He wanted to be a god. He wanted to be in charge, and he wanted to get recognition from the people. He did not want to recognize God as being in control. And I just am reminded of how God is a righteous judge. And, you know, he rescues and he saves um, those that follow and trust him. But he also judges those who do not follow and trust him. And I hope that is an encouragement to us today. I hope that is just a reminder that um, following God is a good thing. It is, um, it's not always easy. It's not easy to obey our parents, to clean our rooms, to do our jobs, um, to have a good attitude while we do it. Um, but in the long run, we are going to be we are going to be like Peter. We're going to see God work in miraculous ways. Um, and the alternative is, is that we're not like Peter and we're like King Herod. And while he was in charge and was a great strong man, he died being eaten of worms because he wanted, because he was judged for wanting to be God. Um, just a really neat passage and a, and a neat uh, reminder to us uh, today. So I hope you in uh, you enjoyed, maybe learned or were reminded something about God today. Um, I hope you guys have a great week and I hope that you will think about and be praying for um, our Christian brothers and sisters. Um, I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you all soon.